from Microbe TV, this is Beyond the Noise, episode number 27, recorded on January 24th, 2024. I'm Vincent Racaniello, and joining me today is your host, Dr. Paul Offit. Hi, Vincent. Hello, Paul. After a week's hiatus, we are back with two of your articles today. Uh, they are both prefaced with uh, When Vaccine Fears Mimic SNL, Saturday Night Live, skits. And those are, are, are posts that you wrote, of course, at Beyond the Noise, and we do the video version of Beyond the Noise. So let's take the first skit first. And I tell you, Paul, these are skits. <laughs> it's incredible. Magnetic people. What's going on here? <laughs> right. So there's a, um, a physician who has been an anti-vaccine activist for years who stood up in front of the Ohio State Legislature during a um, debate about vaccines, about whether they should be mandated, the COVID vaccine. And she claimed that this vaccine was unsafe because it made you magnetic. In other words, that things made of metal would stick to you. And to support her point of view, there was a woman who was a nurse, I think also from Ohio, who stood up and had a uh, key that was attached to her chest as well as her neck to show, here, look, these metal objects are sticking to me. I got the COVID vaccine and now I'm magnetic. Now, did they have a control patient who didn't have a vaccine and wouldn't have the, the metal stick to them? <laughs> no, they, they didn't do the, the right experiment. And actually the one on the neck fell off. The one on the chest stuck. But remember, we make um, our sebaceous glands make sebum, which can be a little sticky, so you can get sure. things to stick. And, and Joe uh, Schwartz, who's a um, <laughs> wonderful uh, chemist who works at the Office of Science and Society at McGill and has written a number of great books trying to make uh, chemistry, normal, everyday chemistry, easy for the public to understand. He, there's a picture of him that I put on this substack where he has a, a uh, spoon sort of sticking to his nose, and he explains how that can happen. Well, as kids, we used to stick quarters to our foreheads, right? And see who's stuck up there the longest. This is a child's play. Now, this doctor, what was, what was the science behind the vaccine making you magnetic? None. I mean, the, the, the uh, chemicals that are used as, as stabilizing agents or buffers um, in, in the COVID vaccine, None of them are paramagnetic, so there is no science behind that. And, and Joe Schwartz, and I, I love the, his sort of explanation, he said that, that, imagine this, I mean, your liver is full of iron, yet it doesn't get ripped out of your body when you have a magnetic resonance imaging scan. And there was another uh, 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 physicist, I think, from uh, Trinity College who said that, you know, that you would probably need about a gram of, of iron under your skin in order to have a magnet stick there. And you would obviously notice something like that. Was this doctor claiming that all vaccines uh, make you magnetic or just COVID vaccines? I think it was just the COVID vaccine. But yeah. And was it just one kind of COVID vaccine or all COVID vaccines? I don't think it was that specific. It was just, just a general fear that I see. vaccines make you magnetic. And so this person was allowed to say this in front of the legislature, which to me is scary because anyone can get up there and say whatever they want, apparently. Which has been happening ever since the beginning of this pandemic, that people, many of whom are responsible people, are perfectly willing to get up in front of the legislatures and say things like, DNA fragments cause you to have cancer, DNA fragments that are contained in the COVID vaccine, or that, that you know, the, the, there's, there was a lab leak and it wasn't an animal to human spillover event. I mean, responsible people, people who are physicians do that. I mean, right now we're living in an age where disinformation and misinformation is king. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a larger problem, really, because it goes beyond science, as you know. <laughs> there's all kinds of misinformation out there. This is just stunning to me that, uh, is there any evidence that anyone believed this doctor? Well, certainly the, the nurse from Strongville, Ohio, stood up there and, and had this thing sticking to her chest and said, please tell me, tell me what's going on, what's happening to me. So I think you can mm. get people to believe anything. 
is, is the way I put this all together, even uh, contentions as preposterous as that. Well, speaking of believing anything, now your second post about SNL skits is called The Sentner Academy. And uh, this starts with someone named Mike Adams. So tell us about him. Right. So he, he's one of the what the New York Times has uh, labeled the disinformation dozen, which are this, those 12 people or groups who have stepped forward during this pandemic to provide a lot of misinformation and disinformation. And one of the things that he said was that, you know, that the spike protein is toxic and not only that it was toxic, but that it could be shed from your body and therefore be toxic to other people. No one picked this up more than um, the head of a uh, private school in Florida called the Sentner Academy. And what he did was he sent a letter to the parents that um, if their children were vaccinated, um, that they couldn't come to school for 30 days because of this toxic shedding of SARS-CoV-2 spike protein problem. He had RFK Jr. come to his uh, school to speak to them. He also said the teachers couldn't come to the school for 30 days because until after the vaccine had been given because of this toxic SARS-CoV-2 spike protein shedding problem, which is remarkable to me. I mean, think about this. You have in your cell, you have maybe 200,000 pieces of messenger RNA, which are coding for the proteins and enzymes necessary for life. Imagine if they were shed. I mean, imagine if the inf- insulin that your pancreas makes was shed. Then all you would need to do if you're an insulin-dependent diabetic is stand next to somebody and hug them who's making insulin. Or if you have sickle cell disease and you need normal hemoglobin, you just need to stand next to somebody or hug somebody who's making normal hemoglobin. So um, it is remarkable what we can get people to believe. So this uh, Mike Adams, where did he say it was shedding from? Did he specify or is it just- No, uh, just shedding from general. Just shedding, yeah. not necessarily from the skin or from urine or feces or respiratories, just shedding, right? Right, so it sort of capitalized on the, the, the other false notion, notion, which is that the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein is toxic. I mean, where's the evidence for that? Much less that it would be shed from your body and transmitted to other people and then cause them harm. And it, it just, to me, the illogical end was the Sentner Academy, which would then sort of prohibit teachers or school from coming there until 30 days had gone by. I presume some... some uh teachers and kids objected or they didn't have any choice because it's a private school? I, I, I never heard that there was pushback on this. Um, you'd like yeah. to think that there was. I mean, one yeah. of the math and science teachers said that, you know, you shouldn't hug your parent as a child who's, if the parents just recently been vaccinated because of this toxic protein shedding problem. This is just, this is just unbelievable, Paul. Now, you mentioned the disinformation dozen well, I'm interested in that. Who else is in there? I guess Andrew Wakefield is one of them. Well, so there's something called the Center for Countering Digital Hate, which put out a monograph that goes through those 12 groups. Andrew Wakefield actually wasn't one of them, at least okay. associated with COVID. He was more measles, mumps, rubella vaccine causes autism. But um, it, it's a monograph worth reading because I think what it, what it says not only is, is the, the bad information that's put out there, but how incredibly well-funded these groups are and mm-hmm. who funds them. Because a lot of that funding comes from the, if you will, alternative medicine industry, like the dietary supplement industry. Right. The woman, for example, who testified in front of the Ohio state legislature claiming that the, the COVID vaccines made you magnetic, she's an alternative sort of health entrepreneur. And um, a lot of these folks are really funded by the, the, uh, the dietary supplement industry, including Mike Adams. So this was what's this organization again? I want to put it in the show notes. It's called the Center for Countering Digital Hate. Center for Countering Digital Hate. Now, you you mentioned that the New York Times identified uh, Mike Adams as as one of these 12. Wouldn't it have been useful for the New York Times to identify people who give correct information like yourself and maybe TWIV? That would help, don't you think? That would help. It would be great to have an article an important article that that lists all those forces out there that are trying to counter this disinformation and misinformation. I mean, TWIV and, and, you know, science groups like science based medicine and and, Mm -hmm. uh, others really put out a lot of very good information about vaccines and and it's readily available. It's not hard to find it and it can help calm you down when you need reassurance. The New York Times has a broad reach, obviously. And so they put out 
about a group that spreads misinformation, that's going to get people to look at it. And they don't know where the good information is. So they really need to balance it, I think. And I'm not sure they're thinking about that because, you know, they're journalists. They just want the splash. But, yeah, you, as you said, there are many individuals and organizations that are spreading correct information. And people seem to be unable to find them. It's quite astonishing. Or unwilling. I, I think we're, we're living yeah. in a, um, an age where there's just an en enormous amount of feelings that there are dark and evil forces working against us. Um, we don't trust institutions like the CDC or the FDA. Um, we don't trust public health uh, agencies. And, and we, we believe that these things are working against us. And, and so when you hear something you know, that, that is bad about vaccines, you, you, you tend to believe it, even if it's not true. Yeah, I think people are welcome to question, right? Like if you say the CDC says something, you say, well, why should they do this? What's the evidence behind it? I think that's perfectly reasonable. But to just uh, have the default be distrusting is not useful. No, I think you should be skeptical of anything you put into your body. But right. there's a difference between skepticism and cynicism. I think you should that's be right. cynical, that's right. you know, that, that no one is to be trusted. Um, but you're right. It, you should look, if you can, carefully at the science behind any recommendation to make sure that it's there. We'll put links to these two columns in the show notes. That's Beyond the Noise with Dr. Paul Offit. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thank you.